Good morning. It is Friday, March 15th. I don't know if it's St. Patrick's Day. I don't know. I'm not wearing green. I uh, hope we have a green day. But honest to God, uh, I, I'm slightly nervous about this market. It is making me increasingly more uncomfortable. Um, we'll go over all the charts. First thing I want to tell you is um, I think I've secured an interview with Stephen Kress, who is the Alpha Picks, uh, the head of Alpha Picks. And if you don't know what Alpha Picks is, it's this uh, portfolio. They're beating the S&P by almost, you know, just over three times uh, for a two-year period, almost two years, July 1st, 2022, since then. Uh, we can show uh, Alpha Picks. They have a new one today. Uh, it is a portfolio. They're up 128% versus the S&P, which is 36. So, yeah, almost four times uh, what the S&P does. Uh, th definitely three times, but I'm not going to do the math in my head. They have a new one, Cruise to All New Heights. Uh, I'm not going to go over it. Respect to the Alpha Picks guys. Uh, Alpha Picks is having a four for everybody who signed up over Alpha Picks, a 4 p.m. Uh, webinar that you can sign up for that's live. Uh, I usually play it on my big screen. I just airplay it. I'm getting them long Apple from my front my, from my phone uh, to my big screen TV. If you want to sign up for Alpha Picks. There is a $50 off coupon right here on the third link. Uh, it is, again, it beats, it's two picks. It's two picks per month. You get two picks per month. Uh, they tell you when to sell and, and they go over everything. What I really like about it is this page in particular, it provides you specific, specific details, fundamental and some technical details about what you want to watch for in their picks. Um, Again, I really like this. Uh, if I had my pick, I would probably choose Seeking Alpha Premium instead of the Alpha Picks. The Premium is only 189 It gets you a, a, a access not to the Alpha Picks group, but it gets you a, a access to the, um, the, the quant, and we'll go over all of that stuff. But I think a, Seeking Alpha Premium would be my first pick. And then the second pick, if you're just kind of a buy and hold and you don't want to use charts, that would be Alpha Picks. So between the two, you can get them for under, you know, six, seven hundred bucks, whatever it is. Um, if you have a large enough portfolio, if you're doing enough research, the the benefit of seeking Alpha Premium is you get to read all the articles and all the analysis. And Alpha Picks is is a curated kind of a portfolio that you can build for yourself. But again, they have uh, this 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 new pick. I will go over it next week, just so you're aware. Um, but if you have any questions for Steven, Steven Kress, again, if, if you want to look him up, he's done a bunch of uh, podcasts out there and a bunch of interviews, but Steven Kress from Alpha Pix, he'll be on the podcast sometime next week, I think. He hasn't confirmed which day, but I've, I've been going back and forth with them. Uh, submit any questions you have for him, anything you want to know, just submit the question. Uh, I'll ask him. I, I don't have to say your name. Don't have to tell him who you are. Uh, but Alpha Picks, I urge you to read those Alpha Picks members. I urge you to read that analysis. What, what's interesting, I did read the analysis this morning. Um, and, and it says, although this, this pick is at a 52 week high, the, fa the, the, the case for momentum investing highlights the, and I'll have this in the newsletter, by the way, if you're a subscriber to the newsletter. So don't worry about like understanding my words, but the case for momentum investing highlights the false theory that if a stock is at its 52 week high, it is overbought. And if it is at a 52 week low, it is an excellent value. Momentum is the only one factor employed by Alpha Picks, but studies have distinguished the winning strategy between 52 week highs and 52 week lows. The risks they highlight are interesting as well. Just a great analysis of that. Um, I, I really liked that that article, um, and it, it, it's worth the money. For, for me, it's worth the money. I'm an affiliate. I get it for free. Uh, I do think everybody who signed up for um, for Alpha Picks is absolutely getting their, their money's worth. Now, let's look at the market here because I want to go over three indexes. It's Friday, so we kind of take a look at the index. We, you know, Friday, we typically don't buy. I may break my rule. In fact, I just put in a buy 
for Costco at 730 bucks. If it hits 700 and it's at 729 right now. So it's going to hit 730 bucks. I'm going to buy Costco um, today. It's going to hit. It's at 729.74. I think it's going to hit. I'm buying it. I think it might hit 725. I think it might hit down below. This is a long-term buy. I am starting a position in Costco. I said it before. I think that, you know, we can look at this chart. Before we look at the Qs, before we look at SPY and before we look at uh, IWM Let's look at Costco. We've come down here. Uh, this low was uh, 725. Uh, down here, it, it got to 712. Um, and, and 716 was the low on March 12th. A and then it seems to have gone up from there. It's putting in a shelf. Do I care if, if I buy at 729 uh, and all of a sudden we're at 709? No. Because I do think that, again, it's expensive. Momentum is hard to break. Algorithm got you out. The MACD got down here. I am simply trying to time this on this shelf. I could get burned. I could completely get burned. Costco is one. I don't mind adding to. Very good management team. Very good. Uh, try and get into a parking lot at uh, Costco on a Saturday. That's the reason I bought it. And I just bought it. It probably pulled through. Let me see. Let me look at my uh, alerts. Um... Uh, let's see. I'll see if I bought it. Let's see. At 7.30, did I buy it? Um, I'm going to pause this real quick, and then I'm going to come right back. I had to confirm that I bought it. It did buy it at $730. So it got down to like $727. Probably would have been better if I was watching it, but I had to do this podcast. So it's a starter position. Again, it's just at this level. $730, $730 per share is what I bought it. If it goes down here, I'll buy more. I'll just buy more. I do like this support level. It's 760, 675 right here as it bumped up in the prior earnings to it and then got rejected off of it. Um, I like that. Uh, I also like this as a support level, 696. I also like this one at 730. I, I mean, take a look at this. This is why I buy these at this level. Look at that $730 level. If we just put that line there, we're going to drag this down to 730 bucks. Look, I mean, if that's not short-term support where it provided resistance and now it's providing support for about three or four candles, I mean, again, you you do you. I'm going to do me. But I think Costco at, at 730 bucks is a good one. Now, let's look at the indices here. QQQ first off. Um, uh, this is the NASDAQ 100. We're putting in a nice little support, it seems, right here at, uh, at about, let's move this um, up here, 435, more at 436 right now. 435 might be the the, the level that we're kind of looking at uh, as a support. Um, I think you've got 421 down here as a support with a volume uh, shelf right there. Uh, if we go through that, then you've got support at 410. So I do think that you've got support. You are going down. I mean, take a look at it. The, the, the action is sideways, but the MACD is going down. Algorithm has not gotten you out. Algorithm will probably get you out of queues today. The way the queues are uh, doing the, the algorithm, you make 38% over 24 months. If you want my algorithm, by the way, TrendSpider is having their sale. Uh, it is $595 for the year. Uh, again, if you trade enough, it makes sense to get this and get it because it's only good for two more days. And, and you can get it on a Friday. I'll email you out the, the newsletter. The way you do it is you go over here to uh, Linktree, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Daily Stock Pick. Click on the link, uh, sign up, and then you email me. My email address is up here on the right. But the algorithm does really well on the queues. It does really well on triple levered. Uh, I was going over on YouTube Live this morning for uh, one of the listeners, FAS, which is a triple levered financial bull. You make 73% over uh, 24 months versus if you bought and held FAS, again, it's a decaying asset. It's a daily triple levered ETF. Do not hold this for the long term. But if you look, we broke down below this trend line. And, and, and I said, just don't wait for the, uh, the, the algorithm to get you out. You are well on your way to making money. This particular person is up 60-something percent in this. Well, look at where you're at. You're over the 200-day. On a decaying asset, when you're over the 200-day, you want to look at selling on weakness. Well, uh, on the four-hour, you have weakness. 
And on this four hour, you've broken down from the trend from October. Doesn't mean you can't buy higher, but it's a triple levered ETF. And so you want to get out when you can. It's got some weakness. Algorithm still has you in. Probably will get you out in the next few days. But again, if you want my algorithm, it makes you 73% in this versus 24 months ago, you lost 10%. There's only 22 positions. So you don't even trade once per month in this algorithm. Uh, but it's a great, great tool. Again, it doesn't doesn't guarantee you money, doesn't guarantee that you're going to find stuff. You do have to do some work on this stuff. But it, it cues, we're kind of looking for support here at 435. Uh, I would expect us to continue this fluctuation up and down. These moves, even though it feels hard, it's not big. I mean, look at where we were in January at 400 on the queues. Boy, don't you wish you would have made 10% buying this in the 400s? Uh, my algorithm on this one makes you 38% versus 31. And, and so let's go look at SPY. So where are we on SPY? Because I'm leading this up into a small cap analysis. Uh, SPY, algorithm doesn't have you out, but you're, you're below your nine day. You don't have confirmation. Uh, here in uh, the market just opened, you're down almost 1%. I mean, you're very weak on this stuff. It, it's just a weak time. It doesn't feel comfortable buying stocks when it's weak. But when, you, when you're seeing this and you're seeing opportunities and, and the, the, the stock is going sideways, you can try and time stuff. If it's long-term buys that you're looking for, try and time it. Just buy it. You can always buy it at a lower price too. D sizing matters. No matter what any woman tells you guys, size matters. Uh, if you're going to put in $1,000 into a stock, buy $100 worth of it today. You don't have to put all one that. Just put the tip in. Just the tip, $100. That's all you need. You don't want to go all in. Uh, it, you know, say this one moves all the way back to the 50 day down here to 508. You know, it's two dollars per share. You know, it's about what one, two percent. It's not a big deal, but it's enough to make it, you know, oh crap, I sh shouldn't have put that hundred dollars in there. It's gonna make you lose sleep. You know, again, on a Friday, doesn't make sense to buy a lot of stuff. Costco, I wound up buying it at set, it's at 728 now. Yeah, if I wasn't doing this podcast, I probably would have just watched the charts, saw the weakness, not bought it. I'm doing the thing. I didn't buy a ton, but I think I bought 10 shares. For me, not a ton. Not a ton. That's a starter position. I'll be looking to put twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 into this stock uh, over time, and I want to get it at a smart price. I think this is a smart price. Again, go to the Costco on this weekend. Tell me that you're not seeing a bunch of people. But SPY, we're seeing some weakness. Now, finally, IWM. This is the uh, Russell 2000 small cap. And this is what everybody's been telling you. Oh my God, you've got to buy this this year because it's the year of the small caps. It ain't the year of the small caps yet. Uh, algorithm got you out with a 2% gain here. You've made some good money in IWM. Again, this is an index. So for uh, for an index, you've made some really good money in this if you've been in it. Algorithm got you out. You know, the algorithm makes you 1%. Buying and holding makes you 1% on this. It's 29 positions. There's a little more uh, volatile than the other indexes. Now, I'm not a big fan of this one. I have friends who have just bought and held this one over the years. Uh, and, and it hasn't done them super well. I mean, you know, they, they were touting this during the 2020 time frame because this was shooting up. The second interest rates came down, this went down. You're just above your 200 day. Yes, you've got opportunity in this. Yes, when rates start coming down, this one will probably fly. Right now, you've got higher for longer. Do you think the Fed is going to uh, raise interest rates next week? No. Do you think they're going to actually lower interest rates? Hell no. There's still inflation in the market. They're going to be late to do this. Remember how late they were? If you weren't listening to me in 2022 uh, or 2021 when they actually, 2020, I think it was March 2022 when they actually started raising uh, and they said we, we were late. If they had started raising in November 2021 when we hit the highs, it would have been easier for the market to digest. Uh, inflation might ha not have been uh, so rampant. But the Fed is always late. They will be late to raise as well. If you're thinking June is going to be a, 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 a raise, or I'm sorry, a lowering of rates, 
I mean, don't expect it because in my mind, I think you're seeing inflation still sticky in the market. And Powell has been clear. You are in an election year. And, and Biden said, hey, rates may come down sooner than you think. That probably means June. Because uh, the, the, in my mind, I don't think you see rate cuts until November, October. But that's the election time. And that's going to look super political. So they don't want to look political. So they're probably going to do it in June. Just my guess, IWM is something to keep an eye on. Uh, I got this from, um, you know, the, the headline that I have in my notes, small caps got hustled by the bond market yesterday. The bond market really took off. Uh, they're tied to the bonds. Uh, and, and I will include a Russell 2000 IWM uh, uh, failed breakout. It, it's a chart that was provided in a newsletter that I read. I think it's um, called Stock Twits. Um, but while large cap and mega cap stocks had dominated the headlines and index performance, mid cap stocks have found their way back to all time highs over the past few weeks, leaving just the small cap area of the market to follow suit. The speculation running rampant in hopes of several rate cuts uh, from the Fed, it looked like the Russell 2000 index was finally going to stage a breakout of its own. That's what you're seeing here. The last few days of action are proving that upward move to face much more resistance than initially anticipated. As the chart shows, the Russell 2000 punched above its December highs. And again, if we go to a daily on this, we'll just go to a daily. And and you can see, here's the, here's the failed breakout. If we just, again, for a trend line, you want to touch three lines. And so the, the only three lines that you can really touch on a daily is that. I mean, that, that's the three lines. If you want to touch three lines here, you're still in an upward trajectory. But the, the real trend line, the more lines you touch, the more valid it is. That's the trend line. You failed the breakout. I mean, it just failed the breakout. You can kind of look at this. Uh, in terms of fixing the situations, traders suggest prices would need to quickly reclaim the 205 to 206 level. You're at 202. So if you claim 205 to 206, then we continue the breakout. If you don't and you stay at 202, we're looking at more downside, maybe to the 50-day at 198. Um, and with a week of hotter than anticipated inflation readings, the market is adjusting its rate cut expectations once again, with Treasury yields rising sharply over the past few days. Uh, if interest rates continue to rise, many expect small cap market segment to continue its string of underperformance. That's it. Um, that's it. I mean, that's, that's as, as simple as I can tell you, uh, that is it. Now let's talk about Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin, us dollar, doo -doo -doo, I think it's USD. Uh, no, I don't see it here. We'll go over to seeking alpha to do Bitcoin. This is part of what is great about seeking alpha is I can just put in BTC and it goes Bitcoin. To, this, I mean, it got killed. It's down 5%. You're seeing all the others with Coinbase and everything else. Um, what was interesting, and I don't know if I tweeted it. I think I may have. Uh, I will include it in the newsletter. I'll, I'll go and look for it. There's an interesting chart that is floating around that the after hours move is what's bringing Bitcoin down. But during the, day, the, the trading hours, Bitcoin is actually significantly up since the ETF started trading. That's super, super interesting because that to me tells me the trading is really in the Bitcoin ETFs and not in Bitcoin itself, which is probably unsustainable considering most of those Bitcoin ETFs are in retirement accounts or boomers who don't want to own Bitcoin directly. They want to own the thing or in uh, hedge funds or um, ETFs that can't own Bitcoin directly. And they didn't want to pay GBTCs like 10%, um, you know, uh, 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 tracking fee or whatever they charge. So I, I thought it was interesting. Uh, I think it's uh, pretty, pretty interesting uh, about this. Um, just a warning. <laughs> oh, uh, just before we get off Bitcoin, there's a support at 65,000. Bitcoin has uh, supported 65,000. It's at 68,000 right now. Um, 65,000 is support, according to Katie Stockton, who's a chartist. Uh, 65,000 is support. There is still an upward trend that gets us to $80,000. She thinks this is just a, a, a bit of a, um, a pullback. Um, but she and she's not a huge Bitcoin, like, oh, oh my God, it's going to, you know, 900K. But she says 80,000 is a very conservative estimate. Uh, she likes to use the 50-day. So if you're trading on a, a Bitcoin chart, use the 50-day. 
That's what she says. Uh, just a warning for everybody who thinks that uh, the next uh, un- unprofitable company is going to make them a fortune. Fisker uh, is going bankrupt. Uh, this is one that I said, hey, trade, uh, great car, I thought, and then MK, MKBHD. If you want to watch it on YouTube, go look at his uh, review of Fisker. Possibly the worst car he's ever driven, he said. And since then, the stock has just completely fallen. Uh, you know, but Ricky Gutierrez said it's not the MKBHD that took it down. Well, yes, it is. Um, yes, it, it a- absolutely is. They had canceled orders. Um, it is not just because of MKBHD, but he had a big part to do in it. Uh, that's why I don't like that douche. But a warning for everyone who thinks that the next um, that unprofitable companies are the next winner. If you had invested ten thousand dollars in Fisco three years ago, just three years ago, um, you'd have seventy dollars. So not a great track record for unprofitable companies going into uh, higher for longer. So be careful. Trade some of those companies that I tell you to trade. Um, five stocks to watch. Blink charging, useless. Don't even worry about it. Groupon. I haven't used Groupon since probably 1992. Um, I'm not a fan. Rose to head after the company said improved financial performance. Shares of Weight Watchers is up 11%. That's a dying stock unless they get some type of GLP-1 uh, integration. Uh, Uber and Lyft uh, will halt operations in Minneapolis um, starting May 1st. Decision comes after the city council voted to override Mayor Jacob's uh, phrase veto of a pay hike ordinance. The the measure increases wages for drivers of ride handling services to $15.57. Critics has previously warned that the new wage would raise costs for customers and lead to exit of Uber and Lyft. They will exit the market. That's just it. If you start charging, they, they can't make money. Uh, doesn't mean that you go and sell your uh, your um, your Uber. Just means that you buy this on weakness. Again, it's down 1% at 76. Anything under, look at that capitulation in this stock. Look at that capitulation right now. The algorithm got you out with a 29% gain. Uh, Algorithm only makes you 50% in this name. If you bought and held this over the last 24 months, you made 144%. But algorithm mind, you know, gets you in and out of these moves. It plays in a middle ground. Uh, It got you out here with a 36% gain. Thought that it was going down. It did go down. You could have tried to time it at 57. That was under confirmation. Gets you in here over confirmation at $60.28. Got you out with a nice 29% gain. The last one was 36. This one was 29. Again, if you pick the stocks, and I'm seeing this, uh, and we talk about, you know, in my paid newsletter, I talk about divergence. Look at this. You're putting in a nice support level there. Well, what are you doing on the MACD? You're getting ready to go higher because you're moving down. What are you doing on the RSI? Oh, sellers are showing up. You're going down. That's divergence. You're looking at this on Uber. That's divergence. It's going to get you back in. This is a stock in my mind. You just buy and hold it. They are uh, going on all cylinders. All cylinders. It is expensive. Just go and buy it. Uh, McDonald's, there was a rumor that the McDonald's app is down. Um, I I don't know that it's down because I didn't order, but if you were trying to uh, order your McGriddle this morning, maybe you had some problems. Um, Stocks to watch. Biggest move is the day, Adobe. Adobe got killed. Um, Adobe, just despite consensus expectations on full quarter earnings, due to its uh, full quarter two outlook falling short of market, it plunged 11%. Is this a buy in Adobe? God, I mean, with again, we're in an AI and GLP one market. This one, in my mind, if it, you know, again, you look at the weekly. This has been on a crazy, crazy tear. You had the golden cross. The golden cross did nothing. So, is the valuation of this company too high? In my mind, look at this. I mean, this weekly candle is just weak. There, you know, pardon the pun. But you can't argue that, the, again, you know, it. the four hour, it has you, at, it will get you out now. It, it gets you in at 564. The algorithm, this one makes you 8%. Uh, you make 31% buying and holding. I mean, the algorithm just doesn't work on this stock. And the reason is because when we look at a long term of this one, you don't ha- necessarily have an upward trend that extends out. 
it just is it it's too big and so again you play in this middle market do i think that we're getting back up here to 673 that we are in just, no they pulled the market forward covid had people staying at home had people creating stuff then the, the you know the creative cloud got bad uh, open ai is showing you don't need you know adobe firefly and they are really good at this but they're just not making money they haven't figured out how to do it so I don't think that that one's a good one. Ulta, on the other hand, declined 7% due to conservative 2024 guidance. I think Ulta's fine. I mean, I own Ulta. Uh, it is not in the core portfolio. Uh, you make your pick, Ulta or Elf. Elf is the grower. Ulta is is the one that's staying there. Uh, it's it's the long-term grower. Again, you, you went down. So where are we on the weekly um, algorithm? I have to look at that. We're back down to the bottom of this channel. The bottom of this channel, we're back down to. Do I get out? I don't know. I mean, you're, you, the MACD went up way high. It, it was a good run. I wish I would have sold out at 556. I'm sitting on a really good gain on this. Um, I do see support down here at 490. So with, with lower guidance and no uh, a catalyst on this one, maybe I get out. And then I can get back in, but maybe I get out. I don't know if I'm in this in my, um, I think I'm in this in my brokerage account. So it, it, there's tax implications on, on looking at that. But Ulta, disappointing uh, guidance. Um, so there, there's a couple. I did watch a great video from uh, Wealth Adventures. I really like him on YouTube. I'm over 50. I'm 53 years old, going on 54. Top ETFs I'm building to maintain a, a million dollar portfolio in my 50s. I do not have his same uh, investment strategy. I will include the ETFs that he went over. He went over VOO, SCHD, XLV, XLK, JEPI, DEVO, uh, and AGGH, uh, which is a bond ETF. He goes over everything. Um, I have to like the video. I didn't like it for some reason, but I do like this. Uh, again, it's a great, great video. His channel is unbelievable. He uses covered call strategies, and he goes over a lot of option stuff. Uh, I don't do options. But I am interested in learning options. I thought it was interesting. Um, yeah. If you want to follow Bradley Freeman, I thought this was interesting. He started a new position in Sentinel. Sentinel missed earnings. They had a ding. Uh, he's a fundamental investor. He does nothing with charts. It is 100% fundamental. Uh, this one is on a pullback. Algorithm got you out with a loss. I, I, listen, if you got in this at, at, at 27 um, and you liked it, don't get out with the algorithm. Just buy more. Algorithm loses you 69%. Uh, actual buying and holding this stock loses you 32%. I've said it before, and I think this $21 uh, is a, a, a support level. I think you might get down to there. Brad Freeman just started a position. It's at $22.65. It is down 2.7%. He is a long-term investor. He started a position. He will have a newsletter this weekend. It's stockmarketnerd.com. The earnings review this weekend will be a bit more detailed than it typically is. He'll walk through the product suite and reasons for his decision. I'm looking forward to it. I will be reading that this weekend. Uh, Goldman Sachs. There's a couple of articles in here. Um, oh, and, and NVIDIA. I wrote this down. NVIDIA's 10% uh, correction. Um, this has uh, traders... Uh, interested in this one. Uh, again, it's a 10% down correction. That's typically what you want to see in a stock from the high to the correction low. And and what we saw was this one here, it gets high at 974. So we're going to go to 974. And then we go down here. And you look at this, and it's a 13% correction to the low down there. That is something, and then you've seen it just kind of pull back up and then pull back down. That's what traders like to see is the volatility of this. With the 10% correction, I haven't seen the MACD pull back that far. I haven't seen the RSI come down to where people are selling. They do have a, a, a um, an event next week. I don't know that you're going to get down below this during the event. But if the event is nothing more than, hey, there's nothing that's changed. Uh, we're, we're just uh, you know displaying some new products that are already known about in the industry. I don't know that you don't get down to this 820 kind of gap down here. So am I adding at 881? I don't know. On a Friday, I might add this. If we get into the 850s, 
today. I may add this one. Um, I may add this in my retirement account. SMCI, different story. It's back at 1100 where uh, I sold it. Uh, it yes, it, it soared up there. Uh, you haven't had, we can take a look at, uh, I'm going to remove this. I'm going to remove this one because this is just, look, my algorithm, by the way, makes you 1,582% over 24 months in SMCI. It's just, I mean, this is solid, solid safety of consumer. Right here, look at this. That's a 9% move. My algorithm still has you in in this. Uh, I am uh, sitting in this in my uh, brokerage account because I want to get to long term. I believe I started buying this in July of last year. Uh, in July of last year, we can go back. Um, there was a gap uh, in this one at 350 um, that I constantly said right here. Now, this one, I, I thought that gap, uh, I bought it. I think I bought it around, yeah, August. When it gapped down, I said, there's no way this should gap down. And I bought it. I bought it down here. Uh, I bought it back here, I think, at 330. And then it gapped down. I bought more. I bought more down here. I bought all the way through August. I think I bought more in December. Uh, I didn't buy any in October, unfortunately, but I did buy more in December as it started to make its move. So I've got a good base down here through the summer of last year uh, where I'm sitting on. Uh, what I sold when I sold it, uh, I sold, I bought into this at about 500 or 400 and I sold up here at 1100. We're at 1097 right now. If we break down below a thousand, I'm, I'm loading up the Brinks truck on this. I'm just loading up the Brinks truck. Again, the valuation makes sense on this. It, it, it is a continued grower who is going to continue to grow. The problem that you have is the volume is down. The MACD hasn't come down. The RSI hasn't come down. Uh, again, you're just entering over the, the fit. You're at uh, what? 54. You got to get down below 50 for me to, to actually do it. But uh, if you're looking for the next NVIDIA, uh, this is, these are a couple of articles. Why you get seeking alpha premium, seeking alpha premium, $50 off. Again, it's 189. Go over to my um, my link tree. It's right here. Seeking Alpha Premium, fifty dollars off. You want to read these articles? This is Goldman Sachs puts out uh, a bunch of names that they think are are the next uh, Nvidia to go. Uh, infrastructure, enabled resources, productivity gains, broader AI exposure, and there's more on artificial intelligence. You want to read this article? Go over to my newsletter, and I'll have it in my newsletter. My newsletter is absolutely one hundred percent free. During the week, I provide this newsletter for free. It's the weekends that's paid. And I do Zoom meetings with people one-on-one, -on -one, uh, not one-on-one, -on -one, but kind of interactive. There's usually, you know, 50, 20 people somewhere in there. Um, there's not a lot. And most people are shy. Most people don't even hop on camera. So you get one-on-one -on -one with me if, you get, if you're a paid newsletter subscriber. You can ask me questions. Whatever you want. You just signed up for TrendSpider. Have a question on TrendSpider. Sign up there. Uh, oh, by the way, speaking of TrendSpider, if you want um, uh, YouTube.com uh, slash at TrendSpider, um, yeah, that's it, at TrendSpider, um, they have office hours. Jason has office hours today at 11, for an hour from now. So uh, go online, go and get his uh, office hours. I think, yeah, uh, I think it's scheduled for today. Uh, there was one, so... I'm pretty sure it's out there today, unless he canceled it. Um, but I, I, you know, he has office hours. It's it's a great one. There's like ten people on there. He's an expert at this. But if you want my newsletter, go in there. I will include all of this stuff, um, including the next Nvidia article and the other article that I think is worth uh, worth subscribing for. Small cap energy financials are the most inexpensive versus history. Tech industrials most expensive. Bank of America. This puts out some good, you know, small cap stuff, small cap ETFs, small cap technology and industrials. You can chart these. You can go over here. So, so here, if we want to look at small cap, um, let's look at small cap technology, PSCT. And let's say, you know, again, it's a small cap. It's a small cap. It's quant sell, higher for longer. Not great. If we look at this against the S&P, underperforming. You know, we talk about this all the time with uh, some of the indexes. It's got to come up. Well, this one doesn't necessarily have to come up. Small cap tech, is, it's an expensive thing. But you're seeing this diverge. Look at how uh, uh, up until 2023, this was outperforming the S&P. It was outperforming the S&P. 
Now it's underperforming. With higher for longer, it's underperforming. One of two things. S&P has to come down or this has to come up. That, that's where you get into the benefit of seeking alpha. We talked about Uber and Lyft exiting Minneapolis. Here's a, a, a longer article that you can read about the, the details of that. Um, Tesla. Uh, oh, well, let's go into the social request because I think that's the next one that, that I need to. Oh, I'll, let's look at Ulta earnings, Adobe earnings. We went over one earnings that, that actually killed it. GCT, global technologies, uh, cloud technologies. This is one that I said, oh, God, I, I don't want this one, blah, blah, blah. I didn't want it. Uh, it's up 5%. It was up at 40 in pre-market. Uh, do I think it's got more room to go? Yeah. I mean, look at how fast that MACD came down uh, to reasonable territory. Look at how uh, the, the RSI is at 54. Um, you're at all-time highs. Again, th- this, this trend line right here, that red line, you're underneath it at 37 so you could absolutely continue the valuation's a little crazy but they absolutely killed it on earnings adobe and ulta we went over uh social requests shep i find it interesting you're not bringing us smci heading into the snp this coming monday is that not not another catalyst no uh snp it, it it's already in i mean they've been buying the stock you you buy on the news you sell on the event uh, that if that wasn't clear with the Bitcoin ETFs, you buy on the news and sell on the event. Um, you know, SMCI with the going into the uh, S and P is kind of the same thing. I mean, look at GBTC. Uh, we can we can you sell it? You you buy on the news? You sell on the event? That that was the news. That was the the hype rally up here until January, and then the actual event happens. Jan- Remember we talked about it January eleventh was uh, the date that, that the, um, the, the lawsuit and they had to uh, launch an ETF, um, you know, a, a Bitcoin ETF. Well, everybody sold off. Look at that move down. Look at that move down over just the next week. So SMCI going into the, uh, the S&P, I don't think it's a catalyst. I don't think it's negative, but I don't think it's catalyst. You want to trade this one on momentum. If we look at a five-minute chart, And we look at this, you do not have momentum. Right now, you don't have momentum. And momentum is a strong force. I've said it before, and I put this line in here at 1093. We're at 1096 right now. That is a support level. So if we get below that, uh, I'm going to start looking at under a thousand bucks. You know, that's where I wanted to enter this one in was I, I was patient, even though for the past couple of days, we've gone nicely above here to 1124. I almost bought this one again. I just want to be patient and, and, and patience pays off. So uh, just to show you, Tesla, they're down 30% since the stock was added to S&P 500 back in December of 2020. I mean, the news ran it up. Look at how the news ran it up. And then you continue to run up. Uh, that's what S and P, what SMCI may have in store for it. But long term, Tesla's valuation couldn't keep up with it. So uh, I thought this was interesting. By the way, I wanted to show this uh, oil USO. So USO is just the United States Oil Fund. Um, it trades just like a regular stock. UCO is the triple levered ETF. Oil has outperformed year to date uh, the S and P five hundred. Just kind of thought that was interesting. Uh, thought that one uh, w- was right there. I thought that was uh, pretty good, pretty insightful. Uh, Tommy O'Donnell from Spotify wants me to look at NU. Uh, is this new core, new holdings? I don't know what this is. Let's go over here and let's look at new. Uh, NU. New core, or I'm sorry, new holdings. New holdings. Digital banking platform and digital financial services in Brazil, Mexico, Colombia, and international. Um, valuation D, quant hold. Um, doesn't, you know, year one year 161%, year to date 39%. Um, I mean, if it's 23 out of 66 in the financial sector. Um, I don't know enough about this one to say, oh my God, you've got to get into this. But this one, ISNPY, um, year to date, this one's up 19%. 
but this one has significantly better grades. I don't know what the difference is, but if we look at the charting against NU, they're both in the same sector. And this is how, you, again, part of how you use um, Seeking Alpha Premium. Uh, we're going to look at that against, let's look at it against uh, XLK. Because let's just look at how it does against technology. Because uh, NU, great over one year, greatly outperforming XLK and ISNPY year to date. NU, clear winner. Uh, three year. Uh, NU doesn't have three years in the chart, but XLK, you know, wins. I, I mean, again, if you want to invest in NU, I don't know if NU is actually making money. I bet they're not making money. Just a guess. Uh, they're making money. PE of 54, forward PE of 19, not a crazy PE. Uh, not a crazy PE at all. Cash on hand, $1.42. They're making about a billion dollars. So I don't think it's a horrible one. Let's look at average price target, $11. You're trading right at the price target, 52 week high, 1172. You're at your 52 week high. So again, just like seeking alpha, the alpha picks guys say, 52 week high doesn't mean you have to sell. Just means you've got to believe that there is more room in the tank to go. Uh, and then you, as far as the algorithm goes, if, you know, Tommy, if you have the algorithm and you knew about this one, it, you should have bought it nine dollars and twenty cents. Yeah, I mean you're currently in a, a nice run on this. Now buying and holding makes you seventy three percent on this um, over twenty four months. The algorithm it actually loses you nine percent. But I'd say this one and and this one before again you got to pick and choose which algorithm entries you want. And the reason is because some of these don't have confirmation. They're not confirming a huge run. Uh, the this entire run right here, I don't know that I would have gotten in. I might have gotten in at this eight dollars and twenty four cents. I definitely wouldn't have gotten out since then um, because you never really lost confirmation. It was right around that nine day. So, but if you're if you got the algorithm and you didn't get in at this nine twenty, why would you get in at eleven fifty nine? In my mind, it's a trade. Uh, and again, I I think you trade it because it's at fifty two week highs. Not a bad one. Eh. Not a great one in my mind. Again, I, you know, for me, if I'm in this, the the financial sector and not a huge financial person, uh, I don't get into financials. Schwab at 67 makes more sense to me to to do Schwab. Citibank, uh, which is a rebound, makes more sense to me at 57. If we look at the weekly of Citibank, you're just coming back. You're just above your your 200 day. And this is a you know a bank that's gonna be there, um, you know even NYCB I think it's NYCB is the new one that that kind of crashed down. I mean you're at three dollars and ninety two cents. Um, you know algorithm got you in at three eighty five. Everybody's kind of buying this because Mnuchin's bringing it back. You want to look at a weekly on this one? I mean again this is just just a forewarning. This is super risky. It's not clear that this is coming back. But, you know, why do you want to get in 52-week high on a foreign bank when you can buy, you know, banks in this country? But NU has the growth. I'm I'm not going to, you know, diss it. Uh, If you want to buy it, just understand you're buying into 52-week highs. Um, That's not a great one. Uh, Dex from uh, from, uh, uh, Reddit. Uh, UI path, great earnings, strong guidance, stock down 7%. Am I missing something? Could down be, be down because of hot CPI and PPI? I think that's it. I also think you're in this trading range. And I think, you know, when you got up here to 26 or 27 in pre-market, uh, if I bring this up and we just look at data and we go to extended hours, I'm just going to look at extended hours in the four hour. Um, you know what? I'll bring it five minutes because it fi- the five minute chart uh, with the extended hour will show you that yesterday when we had earnings, it shot up. I mean, you got to 27. 2709 was the high, or I'm sorry, 2777. So almost 28 was the absolute high right after earnings, 2777. Uh, since then, you, you've had lower highs and you've had lower lows. And then you've just settled into this 22. Now on the four, four, uh, four hour algorithm, I don't know that I'd actually listen to it. I'd probably trade within this range. And you're right at the bottom of the range. I've said it before. Again, they had good earnings, strong guidance. 
Uh, and that's what popped them up here in, in the previous earnings. I You still have a gap down here to 19. If you believe in this company, uh, this is the trading range that you want to uh, be in. I don't know enough about uh, UiPath, you know, playing earnings. The, the chart didn't look great to me. They had to blow away earnings. I don't think they blew away earnings. Everybody just started selling. Now, as far as uh, volume goes, if we look at a weekly, let's just look at long term. Where are people holding this? Because you've clearly, between these earnings, um, set yourself up for a trading range. If we just go back and we look at, let's look at this one where you d uh, rejected right off the nine day. And, and that is February 21st, 2022. Where's everybody holding? They're holding down here at 18. The VWAP is 1857. So don't be surprised if that's kind of where you go, because in my mind, that provides you the support. Look, you rejected off of it. You pulled right back to it uh, from this. You haven't pulled back to it from here. So, uh, you know, your, your bottom level support is 1833. I think your top right here is about $27. And twenty seven dollars is right about um, you know where where this candle rejected off thirty. You might have thirty in this, but again, I don't think you're missing anything. I just think people are you know trading it. I think they're fine. Uh, scans. So these are uh, stocks in my algorithm which are bullish. Amazon. I mean, I've talked about it before. This one hundred and eighty dollars stock. Uh, get it before it gets up there. One seventy seven fifty sixty nine. Algorithm got you out with a nice fourteen percent gain. Tried to protect you. You're right back there to 175. I mean, again, if if you if you're not buying at 175, then don't complain when it's at 188 later. You know, next year. Data dog. Uh, this is from our new watch list that I put into Trendspider that you get when you sign up for Trendspider. Data dog. 122.63. You're at 121. Uh, you know, again, if you're trading data dog and you're you're buying at 121 before earnings, why aren't you buying at 121 after earnings? It dipped down. Yes, it dipped down. If you bought at 121 back here and you're not buying at 121 over here, why? I mean, that's what you've got to ask yourself. Industrials, general dynamics. Uh, this is an interesting one. Industrials have been doing incredibly well. Uh, it, it's up there. N a nice move. Um, Fang, F-A-N-G. This is not your Facebook, Amazon, Apple, whatever. It is Fang Diamondback Energy. Uh, this one has another cross up. If you're in here at 153 on the algorithm, kudos to you. Um, you've got a great run going on and it's got confirmation. Uh, and this was where I said, hey, United States Oil Fund, USO, is beating the S&P. So slowly it's coming back. If, if you want, uh, um, here, year to date, let's just select the symbols and we'll select the triple levered oil, UCO. Um, we'll just look at that one against the S&P. Uh, look at UCO, 21% year to date. Um, you know, again, it's levered by day. So 14% doesn't automatically turn into a triple levered. It's just levered by day. Uh, S&P is up 7%. That's the laggard. But year to date, oil has been doing really well. Uh, Cord Energy is another one. So that's it. Uh, you guys have a great weekend. I will be doing a paid newsletter tomorrow. I may go live on Zoom. Again, the Zooms may be unplanned. Probably won't go live on Zoom, but maybe Sunday I might uh, b bring you guys on to Zoom to kind of show you how I um, how I prepare for the week. Might be an interesting one to look at. Um, but again, the, the, the majority of these newsletters are free. So there's no reason not to sign up. If you're listening to me now, there's no reason not to sign up. Get Trend Spider. If you are even thinking about this one, get it. Get it. I, I will tell you, it is worth every effort that you put into this. Uh, it provides me so much support in, in knowing when I can buy and when I should sell. Uh, it doesn't tell you absolute. You can use bots on this. There is, you know, Pavin was asking me, why don't I use uh, insider data on my uh, trend spider charts? It's out there. I don't use it just because I like my setup here. Um, you know, I like looking at this stuff. I'm used to looking at this setup. There are unusual options. There are bots you can launch. There's seasonality in this. There's analyst recommendations when they do upgrades and downgrades. There's news in this. There is so much thing. There's smart checklists. There's scanners. There's watch lists. There's uh, st strategy testers. Um, you know, you can go to the store, Trendspider store. 
uh, which I should have uh, bookmarked, but it doesn't look like I have it bookmarked. Um, but there's the Trendspider store where you can get uh, custom strategies and Trendspider has created them for you. That's my algorithms. So again, I, I, I do think the Trendspider 100% is worth it. Do not sleep because after this weekend, two days, it, it, it goes on sale. Uh, after this weekend, it goes back to 1100 bucks. So save the 67%. Um, I haven't seen it go below that. I don't know what their future plans are, but uh, Seeking Alpha Premium, it's 50 bucks off. The most I've seen on this is 60 bucks off. Don't wait. Save your time. Over the weekend, if I bring you in, you'll see. I use Seeking Alpha to find stocks, to find opportunities, to find out. They have a great Friday. After the close on Friday, they post an article called The Catalyst for Next Week. It goes over by day, everything that's happening by day. That's worth 189 bucks for me by itself, um, net, net, let alone uh, analyzing your portfolio. I've got the core portfolio in here. Um, you know, analyzing this, it's a 3.63% uh, 3.63 out of five health score. It'll tell you your diagnosis. It'll tell you where you can get better in your portfolio. My dividend score, 4.1. Be careful. One of your stocks has a risky dividend. Let's see which one it says. Um, yeah, Eli Lilly. The yield. I mean, it, it, you know, one of my stocks has a you know, risky dividend. I'm not worried about that. Bank of America, risky dividend, whatever. It's a core portfolio. Again, these are just stocks that you can do. Uh, your portfolio's valuation grade is lagging. My portfolio valuation grade is D. It's because I'm so heavy in, into uh, into tech. I'm into growth. Of course, it's gonna. You have to understand all of these. This is how you know how healthy is your portfolio. Three point six out of five. Uh, you have ten stocks rated highly. Strong buys. Four, uh, buys, six, neutral, 27 stocks are neutral. You can't have them all strong buys. You can't. I mean, this is a super, super strong portfolio that is uh, guided toward growth. So I, I like that. Um, I like top stocks. I like the, looking at the stock screener. I look, look at, like looking at the ETF screener. You can look at the stocks by quant. Uh, you can look at top uh, quant rated dividend stocks, high dividend yield stocks, um, uh, you know, stocks only covered by seeking alpha. Uh, and, and these are stocks that are usually small caps that are only covered by them. FLXS, super small cap. Quant has is a strong buy. You know, uh, this is how I found BLDR, by the way, through su stuff like this, through a, 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 cut, um, a listener asking me about it. I found BLDR 195, buy it. It's going over 200. You know, your 52 week range goes all the way up to 208. Uh, let's go and look at look at the Wall Street. Quant has it as a hold, um, you know, because Wall Street has it as a buy. Seventeen analysts, ten have it as a strong buy. You have an average price target of two hundred and thirteen bucks. That's a nine percent update upside. So I like it. It's ranked nineteen out of forty. Again, this is the rabbit hole that you go down. Azek. This I think this is a decking company. A Z E K. Um, I think they make uh, some of that fake wood stuff. Yeah. Uh, building products for residential, commercial, but 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 to residential, commercial, I don't, yeah, engineered outdoor living products such as decking, railing, stuff like that. Um, strong buy. I mean, you know, you know, you go and look at this one. Let's look at the. Uh, I bet it's not, it doesn't have ten percent upside, four percent upside. So, yeah, it's an interesting one. But that's what seeking alpha premium gets you. And Alpha Picks, again, Stephen Kress will be on next week. Uh, at some point in time, I'm going to interview him. I got to see if I got an email from him uh, what day. If you have any questions for him about C uh, Alpha Picks, if you're an Alpha Picks member and you just want to high five him for, for getting you money, if you want to kind of ding him on the Twilio pick because you're down on Twilio, uh, we can have answer all those questions. Uh, I don't know if it will be live. I'll probably just record the Zoom meeting, to be honest with you. Um, uh, it probably will not be interactive on the paid newsletter of stuff. And I just don't want to put Steven through that. It's just probably going to be a one-on-one. -on -one. So if you have questions, email me, get to get me on social media. All of the social media is up here. Uh, but again, these are the things. And again, Weeble, Weeble best, uh, you know, best mobile app. I just had problems in the pre-market with uh, Fidelity's mobile app, trying to get that damn Costco buy-in. Um, but I did buy Costco at, at live, you know, here at 7:30. It's at 7:28. Am I worried? No, no. Just kind of putting in that 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 little front there. So algorithm doesn't have you in. I didn't buy this on the algorithm. You know, algorithm makes you 24% versus 35% buy and hold. I want to buy and hold this. 
if we get down here to 710, I'll just buy more. Again, I bought a small position. So, uh, yeah. Any questions? Hit me up. Okay, take care. Bye. Every morning I wake up to the sound of the trading bell. My heart starts to pound. Daily stock day trading podcast in my ears. Guiding me through my hopes and fears. Tune in daily. Don't miss a single show. Sign up for the newsletter. Let us help you grow. Taking risks, making moves, seeking success. Together we'll conquer. No room for any less. Every morning I wake up to the sound of the trading bell. Hopes and fears. Tune in daily, don't miss a single show.